Hello and welcome to another revision guide here on historyhelper.co.uk. You can watch this video on History Helper uh, if you go to the home page and then click on History Helper TV and you can watch it in the embedded video guide channel which is just here or you can go onto YouTube directly and watch it through the channel called History Helper and then when you're there subscribe and that means you get an email telling you when I make updates which will mean you'll know when I've got new stuff. Okay now today's video is all about William Beveridge and the Five Giants and we're not going to go into any major detail about the, the Labour Party governments during 1945-51 to 51 and look at their strengths and limitations etc. What we're going to do though is look at how they actually tackled these five areas of society. So let's begin. Now the report was written by a guy called Sir William Beveridge and he was a liberal economist commissioned by the wartime government to help plan Britain's post-war future. Now don't forget when we talk about the wartime government we're talking about Winston Churchill and the coalition that governed the country during the Second World War made up of Conservative, Labour and Liberal politicians. Now the Beveridge Report was published in 1942 and identified what were called five giants preventing Britain from becoming a modern society. So let's see what these giants really were. Okay the first thing that Beveridge identified was the issue of want and essentially this means poverty or need. A lot of people were in um, in need of uh, basic uh, financial support, healthcare etc to actually keep them alive and keep them above the poverty line. We also have this issue of ignorance which is all due to poor education. We have the issue of disease, a lack of national health care. Don't forget it was all um, had to be paid for as well so there's nothing free in those days. The next issue was squalor that was all down to poor housing, slum living, uh, and also idleness, which was a hangover really from the time of the Depression and unemployment. Now Beveridge believed that if you could tackle these five things it would take Britain forward. So in 1945 um, we actually see the election of a Labour government under Clement Attlee. Now this is despite the fact that Churchill, the previous Conservative Prime Minister, had led us to victory in the war. Um, he wasn't seen as a peacetime leader and so they elected Attlee, who had been Deputy Prime Minister during the Second World War. He was a greatly respected, mild-mannered sort of chap, and crucially, the Labour Party had promised in its election campaign that they would directly tackle Beveridge's five giants. The Conservatives had been a bit iffy on it, to be honest with you. They hadn't really said, oh yeah, we will sort it out. They'd sort of hinted they'd do one or two things, but had largely rejected the findings of the report. OK, let's look what Labour did for want. So we have 1946, the National Insurance Act, which provided benefits for the unemployed and pregnant women, pensions for the retired, and allowances for the sick, widowed, and mothers. We also have the 1946 Industrial Injuries Act, providing compensation for injured workers. And then finally, 1948, the National Assistance Act, which assisted the poorest people in society and crucially abolished the poor poor that's a hangover from Victorian times, workhouses, another Victorian hangover, and the UABs, the Unemployment Assistant Boards. They were those awful things established during the time of the Great Depression in the 1930s that um, uh, did the means test, and so they were greatly hated. So all of these three were got rid of. Next up, we look at ignorance. Now, ignorance was tackled through um, education acts and in interestingly enough the first education act was actually a conservative idea in 1944 that's why I've put it in blue to represent conservative and it was dreamt up by a guy called R.A. Butler and is sometimes known as the Butler Education Act now his idea was free primary and secondary education for all school leaving age to be raised to 15 it was later raised to 16 uh, but unfortunately during 1944 there was no money um, so the Act couldn't actually be passed and enforced. So in 1947, Labour actually passed this into law. But just remember, its original conception was during the national government. Okay? And it was a conservative idea. Um, also tackling both ignorance and idleness, idleness was the Unemployment and Training Act of 1948, aimed at establishing a skilled workforce, uh, gave funding to school leavers, leavers and demobbed servicemen to train. A lot of people came home from the army, had no training because they hadn't finished their education. They needed training to get into jobs. That would give them, uh, give them education against ignorance, ignorance and also give them a job which would stop them being idle. 
and it's also aimed at regenerating areas of previously high unemployment like South Wales. Again, South Wales, northeast of England, previously industrial areas needed to get over the 1930s. We also have squalor. Now, this was tackled through the 1946 and 1949 Housing Acts, gave financial help to local authorities to rebuild the cities damaged during the war, and between 1945 and 1951 you have one and a quarter million permanent new homes built. That doesn't include the semi-permanent uh, or temporary housing, like, like the prefabs for instance. We've also got the 1946-49 Rent Control Acts, which gave tenants rights above their landlords. In other words, landlords can no longer just change the rent conditions or provide shabby housing. They had to stick to the law. You've got the 1946 New Towns Act. 14 new towns were to be built over the next few years, including places like Cumbran, uh, Stevenage and Milton Keynes. And then you've also got the 1949 Access to the Countryside Act, which opened up public footpaths and aimed at keeping the population healthy to get out and about. Of course, that was viciously opposed by landlords, country landlords, who believed it was just an excuse for the working class to trample all over their land. But it got passed anyway. Next you have disease. This is possibly the most famous giant tackled by Labour, um, partly because it left us with their greatest legacy, the National Health Service. 1946 saw the National Health Service Act pass through Parliament, establishing a free accessible healthcare system for all. It was the beginnings of the true welfare state. And it was the brainchild of this guy Bevan, who was Minister for Health, but also Housing. So all that stuff on squalor that you saw on the previous page, that was Bevan as well. A big player in the Labour government, this guy. Began uh, properly on the 5th of July 1948. By 1949, eight and a half million people had received free dental care, five and three quarter million pairs of glasses had been issued, and 187 million prescriptions had been dispensed. Now, those numbers tell you the story. It was hugely expensive. They in, uh, estimated the in annual budget would need to be about £187 million. The actual cost turned into £355 million. And in 1951, charges had to be brought in for some services like uh, dental care, eye care and prescriptions. And Bevan actually resigned when the charges were brought in because he said it gets, went against the, um, the, the health service that he dreamt up, which he believed should be free for everybody in all situations. OK, that's it. Um, it's a very, very quick rundown of Beveridge and the Five Giants. Uh, if you want more detail, you can go onto the website historyhelper.co.uk, click on GCSE and follow through, through to, the, to the Depression paper, and uh, you'll find extra stuff there. Um, don't forget to subscribe to YouTube, bookmark History Helper. Our numbers have gone up massively. We're knocking on 5,000 hits now, and um, the number of people around the world clicking on the website is fantastic. So if you're listening from outside the UK, hello. If you're listening from inside the UK, hello, don't forget, tell your friends. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.